You don't remember? Anyway, are we all done? Good. Hi, good morning, everybody. Jake Leochko here with Catholic Best Practices. Today is Monday, August 28th. It's a beautiful feast day today. It's a feast of um, St. Augustine. The feast day of St. Augustine, one of the uh, greatest saints of the church, is a doctor of the church, okay? who was, who was, before he became Catholic, he was, um, you know, practically a, a, a pagan. He was, and he was going against the, the church. He, uh, he uh, had to be converted to the faith by his own mother. See? By, his, by well, by the prayers uh, of his own mother and the efforts of another saint, Saint Ambrose. Okay, uh, I encourage you folks to read all about the life of Saint Augustine. It's a very uh, encouraging, very inspiring kind of uh, life, and. Um, in that too, uh, especially if you can read the Confessions of St. Augustine, that's uh, a very nice uh, book to read, very um, um, inspiring story. Uh, and I would like to think it's a, it's a must read for all Catholics. Uh, you want to grow in your uh, spiritual life, read the Confessions of St. Augustine. And it tells you also the beautiful story of St. Monica, whose feast we celebrated yesterday. Eh? Uh, St. Monica, yeah. So St. Monica and St. Augustine, mother and son, their feasts come together because their lives are intimately tied with each other. Today, too, is the birthday of an auntie, Ida. Happy birthday, Tita Ida. Hope you have uh, a nice birthday. Yeah. Oh, Tita Kathy was a few days back. Yeah. Hi, Tita Kathy. We also want to greet you a happy birthday. Okay, so... Today we're going to read a very interesting gospel from St. Matthew. The gospel of today is from St. Matthew chapter 23, verses 13 to 22. Okay, Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, let me just try and fix myself up here. Okay, there you go. That's better. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. <laughs> You lock the kingdom of heaven before men. You do not enter yourselves. Nor do you allow entrance to those trying to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Very harsh words our Lord is <laughs> saying here to these, to these uh, leaders of the law. See, to, to those who, to the leaders of the, of the Jews, right? You traverse sea and land to make one convert. And when that happens... You make him a child of Gehenna, twice as much as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides. Blind guides. See, this is very important here. Who say, if one swears by the temple, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gold of the temple, one is obligated. Blind fools. <laughs> How much more <laughs> insults do you want to hear from Jesus himself? Right? Blind fools. Which is greater, the gold or the temple that made the gold sacred? And you say, if one swears by the altar, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gift of the altar, one is obligated. You blind ones, who? which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? One who swears by the altar swears by it and all that is upon it. One who swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. One who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who is seated on it. Blind guides, you hypocrites, very strong words that our Lord uses here to, to emphasize one important lesson which I want to dwell on today. What is that? The obligation for each and every one of us to give good example good example is something that all of us all of us are obliged to give to others okay? um, these uh, scribes and pharisees these teachers these leaders of the jewish people uh were being reprimanded by our lord okay because they were so they they were sticklers for the law right they wanted everybody to strictly follow the law, 
In fact, they made up many more laws than what was essential, right? That's why, that's why they got so confused already about what's really important with the law. And so they ask our Lord, right? Uh, like the lawyer asking our Lord the other day in the gospel, well, which is really the most important of the commandments? And our Lord emphasizes, well, you know, uh, really the only two most important things and the whole law and the prophets and everything that has been revealed to you is confined really uh, to these two things love god love your neighbor right simple now love god love your neighbor but beyond that really what our lord uh, expects of the scribes and the pharisees what the lord expects from if we apply that in our lives now, teachers and parents and everybody in authority, right? Is that we give good example to everybody else. Okay? And to think about it, really, it's not only parents and teachers or people in authority who have the obligation to give good example. Actually, each and every one of us have an obligation to give good example to others. Right? We cannot say, uh, we cannot say, um, uh, we cannot oblige other people to obey uh, the laws. We cannot oblige other people to live up to the faith when we ourselves are not doing it. Right? So many people proclaim themselves to be Catholics. Right? In fact, there is uh, there are some people who uh, like to say we are Catholic out loud. Right, the terminology Catholic out loud, right? And uh, well, uh, yeah, it's good. It's good to be Catholic out loud, right? But uh, but uh, we are not Catholics who we should not be Catholics who would just proclaim our Catholicity, right? We should be Catholics who should wear our being Catholic on our sleeves, you know, so to speak, right? We should actually live it. We should actually practice it. Because there are some people who proclaim themselves to be Catholic, yet they're gossipers, yet they're bad workers or sloppy workers, they're bad bosses, they, uh, they, um, they are critical of others, they uh, are unfaithful spouses, uh, they condone abortion and, uh, and uh, contraception, like some of our politicians, right? They say, oh, I'm Catholic, I'm Catholic, yet they support abortion. <laughs> or they're corrupt politicians, or they're corrupt, uh, uh, they're unfair bosses, etc. Well, you know, what do these people end up doing? They end up giving the Catholic faith a bad name, bad reputation, right? Why? Because they scandalize people. Oh, is that the behavior of a Catholic? Is that what being a Catholic means? Somebody who behaves like that? Oh, well, then I don't want to have anything to do with being Catholic anymore. If that is the example of what a Catholic stands for. See? So it's very bad. Really very bad. We, we, and it's not fair. It's not fair to the other Catholics who are living up to their faith very well. It is not fair to our Lord Jesus Christ. Because this is not what he taught us to do. Right? He taught us to uh, uh, love God and love our neighbors and show it in our lives. Show it in our lives, not for the sake of showing, not for the sake of boasting, not for the sake of, um, you know, uh, just uh, attracting attention of people. No, that's not the whole point. Rather, giving good example is a way of teaching. It is a way of teaching. Right? Uh, in, in, instead of just uh, instead of just talking and talking and, t and telling people th to do this, do that, this is the right way to behave, that's the right way to behave, the best way to really teach is by showing example. Show, don't tell. Right? Show, don't tell. That's a very clear lesson I learned from journalism school. Right? One of my teachers uh, coined uh, that kind of a phraseology. He said, when you write news, Okay? Don't just tell that this happened, that happened, this happened. Show it. Show by be, being graphic about your descriptions. Show it. Same thing is true with our behavior. Let us show, not just tell. Right? Because we have the obligation to make Christ shine in our lives. Okay? When people see us behave in public, okay? what they have to see is not 
Joseph, it's not Jacob, it's not Shabel, it's not. What they have to see is Jesus Christ shining forth through our behavior. Okay? We have to show Jesus Christ living in us and whose example we are, or whose life we are emulating, we are putting into practice and we are showing to others. That is the best way to teach. Right? So, and I'd like to particularly address uh, parents and teachers and those who have an obligation to form the consciences of young people. Okay? The best way for us to form the consciences of young people is to show them our good example. So parents, for example, eh, uh, your kids uh, who attend the parish school of religion, they're being taught to go to Mass on Sundays. But if you parents don't take them, can they drive themselves to Mass? Can they walk to Mass by themselves? And uh, what are they going to think? Well, that's what my teacher tells me at PSR, but my dad rather uh, uh, would, would rather watch football. My dad would rather... Uh, I don't know, play golf. Or uh, my mom would rather go shopping on Sunday. So, well, what happens then? Well, nothing. Your, your kids are not going to Mass. Right? Or, uh, or you tell your children, Hey, uh, okay, you pray. You pray, okay? You pray, but you, you don't accompany them to pray. They're not going to learn to pray. They're not going to learn how to become close to God if they don't see it in their parents or they don't see it in their teachers or they don't see it in other people who are supposed to be older than them or uh, in authority or in a, in a situation of influence, right? And really, uh, and, and that's, uh, that's not going to help at all, okay? So faith is something we should uh, live in our lives and give good example of. Now, parents and those in authority are under a heavier obligation to uh, give good example to others. So, and, and uh, today we have the, the example of St. Augustine and St. Monica. Okay? So as we already said, St. Augustine was, um, you know, not a very good son uh, as far as saying. He was very smart. Of course, he was searching for the truth, right? Uh, he was... Uh, he was good, um, humanly speaking. Well, he had his own sins. He had his own misbehaviors as an adult, right? But uh, he had a mother who kept praying and praying and praying and praying for him and her husband for years, for years, for many years. And at the deathbed of her husband, he gets converted. Okay? He gets converted. So our Lord answered the prayers of St. Monica on the deathbed of her husband. Right? He gets converted. But, you see, he, he, God obtained an even bigger miracle for Augustine. Augustine did not only get converted, he even became a priest, he even became a bishop. And he be became a great bishop and, and a doctor of the church. Right? Thanks to the prayers of St. Monica. Right? And St. Monica gave Augustine and her brother, his brother, by the way, there are two of them, very good example, good example, the example of her devotion, the example of her love for God, the example of her life of prayer, the example of her detachment from material things. See, that was what St. Augustine saw. That was what St. Augustine got inspired by. That's why he converted, he changed his life completely and followed our Lord, became faithful and became a great bishop. Eh? There's a story told that when St. Monica was dying already, this is all in the confessions of St. Augustine. St. Monica was dying in her deathbed. You know, she was old and very advanced in age. She was telling the two, the brothers, St. Augustine and his brother, why am I still here on earth? You know, I have already accomplished, I think I have already accomplished what God uh, uh, put me on earth for, which is to convert you, <laughs> to, to convert your father and to convert you. So I really don't know why I'm still on earth, why God is still keeping me on earth, right? And so she said, I, I think I want to die already. And, uh, and the brother, the brother St. Augustine was saying, oh, no, you're not going to die here. We're going to bring you home. Eh? We're going to bring you home to your native land. I want you to die there. And St. Monica gives him a stern, a stern look. Says, what are you thinking? He looks at St. Augustine and says, Look at this brother of yours. 
Up to now, what all he could think about is to bring me home to my native place. And that is not important anymore. She goes, say, that's not important anymore. Eh? This place on earth is just uh, temporary for us. This is not a permanent place. It's not important, those kinds of things. Bury me here. Just bury me here. Eh? And, and Augustine and the brothers looked at each other and said, well, okay. Eh? Okay. See, <laughs> St. Monica, up to the last minute, was showing the brothers detachment. See? Eh? There are things in this world that are not important anymore. The most important thing is to go to heaven. I don't care where you bury me. I don't care where I die. I don't have to die in the best situation or the best place. I don't have to be given a, the best tomb uh, and buried in my native place. No more. Just bury me here. I die here. Bury me here. That's it. Okay? Gives us Saint Monica gave us her sons uh, a very good example of detachment from earthly things. See, because that's the way she lived her life. See, that's the way she lived. It. Did Jesus choose his burial place? <laughs> Did Jesus have a last will and testament say, oh, "Okay, when I die, you please choose the best cave"? Okay, where are you gonna lay me and you're gonna do this? And no, our Lord just left it out to chance. You know, whoever it is might pick up his body, and you know, he just. But, of course, those who picked him up after he died gave him a very good burial. But, I mean, you know, our Lord lived the same way. St. Monica lived the same way. Okay? And so that is a good example. The value and the power of good example. That must have made St. Augustine a great saint. Right? So, folks, those of you listening to this broadcast and to this gospel, especially those who have an obligation uh, to form the consciences of young people. Giving good example is one of the best things you can do. Okay? Giving uh, actions speak louder than words. Right? Actions speak louder than words. Right? Uh, let us give good example to others and that way make Christ, the life of Christ, shine through us shine through our lives let us be let us allow jesus to make us instruments to bring other people close to him through our good example okay it's time to go folks hope you have a good day it's going to be a very hot day here in the central valley stay cool okay and uh we're off to mass okay bye see you next bye. time bye, bye.